we already know that you can express the velocity as a function of time. So, for example, you can say that the velocity is equal to 2t. And this is a really useful equation because if you want to know what the velocity is at any given time, you can just sub in a time and you'll get an answer. But you can also express the velocity in terms of other things as well. Express velocity in terms of displacement. So what that looks like is velocity is equal to some function of displacement. An example of this might be velocity equals 2x. So what this says is that if you sub in a position of a particle, or if you know the position of the particle, you can determine the velocity just by putting it directly into our function. Let's dive into a real example so you can see what it looks like. Here's our question. Uh, the velocity of a particle moving along a straight line is inversely proportional to its position. So let's get started there. We're saying that the velocity is inversely proportional to its position. And we can now write that as an equation. V equals k over x. We don't know that k value, but we are able to figure it out. You should know that this is a differential equation, right? It's the same as what you've done in the past. Now, velocity, remember, is the rate of change of displacement with respect to time. So what we have is dx dt equals k over x. And from here, it's just solving a differential equation. Solve it. I'm just going to flip the differential equation, so dt dx instead of dx dt, and then move from there. Finding the integral of x on k, that's going to be x squared over 2k, and don't forget your little plus c on the end. Now from there, we're using whatever initial information we have. So we have the particle is initially 1 meter from point O, and is 2 meters from point O after 1 second. Now because we've got two unknowns in this, a k and a c, we can sub in these points here, one meter initially and two meters after one second um, for time and for displacement, and we'll be able to find that k and that c value. The two points I'm subbing in, 0, 1, and 2, 1. Remember that 0 refers to the time and 1 refers to the displacement, and here as well. And then we just solve this. This is equation 1. This is equation two, and then we just solve them simultaneously however we want to solve them simultaneously. So we get k equals three on two and c equals negative one third, and we can sub in k and c into this equation right here. Putting three on two in for k means that the denominator here is just going to be the number three, because two times three on two is three, and c is negative a third, so that's there. Now the question was, find an expression for the particle's position at time t seconds. So we need to rearrange that to make x the subject. Jump you through the algebra there, it's too straightforward, but we get root 3 t plus 1 third is equal to x, and there's our answer. Nicer version of it, um, just expanding the brackets there, root 3 t plus 1. Now you might be thinking that we need like a plus or minus there, and technically, we should have a plus or minus in the beginning, but we can get rid of the negative sign because we know that when t is equal to 0, initially x is equal to 1. So this is spitting out positive answers, so it is plus there. And so if it's plus, we don't need to write that at all. To this question, given we now know this bit here, we have enough information to uh, find an expression for the particle's velocity at time t seconds. So something we, we know more traditionally, velocity equals something, something, something time. So we knew that velocity is equal to k on x, and now we know that k is equal to 3 on 2, and we know that x is equal to this thing here. So we have everything we need. We know that velocity is equal to k, which is 3 over 2, times 1 over um, root 3t plus 1. Alright, and we can tidy that up a bit. Answer, that's it. Our velocity function in terms of time is this right here. Velocity is equal to that. Now, uh, we've done that. There is two parts to this video, though. The second one is finding acceleration in terms of velocity. Same sort of idea. Here's our question, and you can see we're given an acceleration function. Acceleration equals 
this. Uh, negative k, where k is a constant, 50 minus v, where v is the velocity. Now, traditionally, you're used to having acceleration functions where t is our variable here, but instead we've got this v as our variable here. But obviously, we can still work with it. We know that acceleration is the rate of change of velocity with respect to time, and we have this function here, negative k, 50 minus v. V. And we can start working from there. First of all, flipping the differential equation, so we have t on the top, so we've got t on this side and v on this side. Uh, and now we're going to integrate that, so we can say that t is equal to and this 1 over negative k, I can put uh, out here like this, and then integral 1 over 50 minus v with respect to v. This 1 over negative k, that's fine. Now, this bit here integrates to be negative ln 50 minus v. So I've got a negative multiplied by, and this is going to be a negative as well. So it's going to be a positive. We can get rid of that bit right there. Equals 1 over k ln 50 minus v plus c. Okay, where are we going to go to from here? Uh, find v in terms of t, da, da 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 We need to find this c value, right? And how can we find the c value? Well, we have an initial velocity of 25 meters per second. Sub 0.25 in for t and v, respectively. From that rearrange, we get c is equal to negative 1 on k ln 25, which gives us a t function. After rising, you get the 1 on k out the front, and then using log laws, you can divide by 25, and we get this here. Now, of course, we want v by itself. v is equal to something something t so we need to rearrange this and it's going to turn into some exponential looking thing jumping through some steps here when we rearrange that it'll be v equals 50 minus 25 e to the kt and now we have our function now the original question wanted us to uh sketch okay the motion stops and the body is instantaneously at rest for the first time when the velocity is equal to zero so our graph is going to stop when the velocity is equal to zero uh, let's sketch this. Um, it's it's a uh, exponential graph, um, so it's, and it's negative exponential graph. So it's going to be moving down like this. Now at time zero, um, we're going to be fifty minus twenty five times one because putting t zero is there. So that gives us at time zero the velocity is twenty five. Okay, and it's going to start decaying, decaying like that, something like that. And we just need to find this point here. In other words, when is the velocity equal to zero? And we just let the velocity equal zero. Now, when you let the velocity equal zero, you'll be able to find this point here. This neat little value here, uh, when the velocity is equal to zero, the time is ln2, ln2 over k. That's this point right here. Okay, uh, this is really just an application of differential equations. There's nothing too tricky here. We're just applying it to uh, velocity and acceleration.